After experiencing the longest wait for anything that I've ever ordered, this has finally arrived. It's the Wheel 2. It's a highly sophisticated and rather expensive record player. But it does stand the potential to be my favourite of all the record players that are currently being manufactured. So let's see if it lives up to the hype. Yeah, so that wait from ordering this to getting this box through was around about seven years. To be honest, I thought it would never arrive. I thought I'd lost the money and I wasn't going to see this day. So there's a bit of relief here, but there's also a bit of trepidation. Let's have a look. A box in a box. You know I like to see that because it means the thing should survive and it's all been packed with airbags as well. So that's good. Let's get this one out of the way. Now this should be a wheel two even though I ordered a wheel one. I'll explain it all later on in the video, but let's just see that we've got what we wanted here. Okay, so the record has moved out of its packet a little bit, but we'll just take that out of there. Right, okay, this is good so far. Yes, that is a wheel two. I'll tell you the difference between a wheel one and a wheel two in a moment. Remove red clip at the bottom before use. Okay, well, we'll do that now. Take that off, pop it to one side. And the other things inside the bottom here, well, we've got the power supply. So it's a two amp USB. There's our USB lead, which will no doubt be a USB-C. Yes. Instruction booklet, mounting bracket, because you can lay this thing flat or have it stood up. And a little paintbrush thing. Hold on, that's not all though. I can see there we've got a 45 adapter at the top corner. Okay, so I'll just take this protection off and there you go. This whole thing is hand assembled in the Netherlands and it really does look beautifully constructed. Let's just take this section out. That'll be hiding the stylus or protecting it. Can I get that out? Oh, hold on, there we go. Yeah, that's better. Here we have the USB power input and a three and a half mil output for the audio. It's got a built-in phono preamp. We'll just flip it over. So at the bottom we've got these rubber feet which are dampened. There's not much else to see down there. And it's got this nice wooden plinth. There's two different designs available of this. I think there's a black one as well. I'm glad I chose this. I like the contrast. And I think I'll just plug it in there and give it a go. So I think we'll keep it that way around because the text is the right way up. And this is the control panel. I'll show you that in a bit more detail. So you can see here, we've got a series of lights underneath there. You won't be able to see that until we get it turned on. Little jog wheel there. So I'll show you how all that operates once we plug it in. Right now, it did come with a record. I don't know how much of this I can play, but there isn't that much of it to play, as you can see from the size of the recorded section. Now notice it says this side up. Because we've got the stylus coming in underneath through this slot here, the records are played from beneath. And therefore the record also turns in the opposite direction to the way we're familiar with, so anti-clockwise. But uh, let's just pop that on there. Okay, so this should be the start button here. There we go. Right, I'm happy to see it's working and I can understand now why they give you this clear disc because it gives you an idea as to exactly what's going on. So let me zoom you in a little bit and then you'll get a clearer image of what I'm looking at here. So I'll just start it from the beginning again. If I just press play here, you'll see the stylus move from the inside of the record to the outside, at which point it gets placed on the running groove. But whilst it was doing that movement, it was identifying the number of tracks on the record and where they were. And that then enables me to jump to the next track just by pressing a button. So I'll skip to the next one along and it'll move in and put it down in the appropriate position. We've also got the ability to adjust the volume here using the jog wheel on the outside. And we can pause and of course if we hold it down it'll turn off and go back to the centre. Okay I'm going to use this record. 
Music for Drifters by Richard Horton. He sent me this a while ago and I've used it in a few videos and it hasn't content matched. So it's a good one to put on here. It's also a bit of a test because it's a really bright color disc as well. Now I want to play this side. I think there's five tracks on there, but you have to remember to pop that side facing downwards. And of course, once you press play, the whole thing spins counterclockwise, but it takes very little getting used to. It's uh, very easy to operate. Pop it down, press play, your record starts up. There's very little you have to think about. Now, one thing with it being this way up, you're protecting the stylus from dust by having the record on the top here. So you don't need a, a dust cover, just leave a, a disc on there. Perhaps not your best disc, but any old disc will do. Now, if you want, you can manually cue the record. So you can see here, if I wanted to get to that track, I could hold it down and the stylus moves in. And I think we're just about in the right place now. Yeah, there we go. But it's a lot easier if you just want to skip tracks to just press forward or back like so. So you could just jump to that track there and the stylus will move all the way across. And once it gets there, it starts playing automatically. Now it's a two speed record player. It'll play at 33 to third and 45. And it also automatically detects the size of the record you're putting on. So for a 12 inch, it'll play those at 33 to third as it will for a 10 inch record. But for a seven inch, it plays those at 45 RPM. You'll see the stylus just pop out of the edge there as it determines the size of the disc. And then it puts the stylus down on the disc being played at 45 RPM. Now, of course you might have the situation that you've got a 12 inch record that needs to play at 45 RPM, or perhaps a seven inch that needs to play at 33 and a third. Let's do that with this one then. So what we'll do is we'll just stop that from playing and take the record off. You have to do this adjustment with no record in place. This is the settings button. If I press that once now, that will play this record at the speed I've selected, which is 33 and a third. So it's gonna sound a little bit odd, but it's just a demonstration to show you that you can alter the speed based upon your own preferences. So let's just have a listen. So here's how that looks on the display. The first press is 33 to third, second one 45, third press takes us back to auto. You'll notice when I take the record off, the stylus hides away underneath. If you want to clean the stylus off, you can just hold this button down here and it will put it into a service mode. And now it's in this position, we could clean any debris off that stylus. And you can see to the right of this cartridge, there's another arm that follows it along. And that one includes the emitter and receiver, which detect the track brakes. A light shines up. If it reflects back into the receiver, it means that it's in between tracks and it counts those up as it goes in and out. Now, if I just press the button here, all this will retract back underneath the center. Now it's at this point I'd like to summarise my history with the wheel. It started off as a Kickstart campaign launched in early 2017. The campaign was launched by a company called Miniot and it met its goals and was successfully funded on the 17th of March 2017 with an estimated delivery date for the turntable of late that year in October 2017. Now I got there early within the first 200 backers so I paid a discounted rate of €472. Euros. The final retail price was estimated to be a 806 euros but 2017 came and went without a shipment as did 2018 2019 2020 and 2021 incidentally in that year i'd received quite a few emails from people who'd seen this new wheel thing being featured online in blogs or instagram or whatever and they were asking me to take a look at it i replied that i'd ordered one four years earlier and if it ever did turn up yes i'd be making a video about it so then we get into early 2022 and the Miniot team had an announcement. It turns out that the original wheel design was proving too complicated and time consuming to put together. Most of the ones they'd shipped had got damaged in transit. However, they did have a solution. They developed a new, better model called the Wheel 2 that they got a lot more confidence in. 
Some of the notable improvements were that the Wheel 2 was not just restricted to playing 12-inch discs, it had a different control system as well as a display. It was centre drive rather than rim drive, so a significant second-generation upgrade to a largely non-existent first-generation device. The issue was, though, that the Miniot people wanted you to pay an extra €150 Euros if you wanted to upgrade to this Wheel 2, made it quite clear that if you decided to wait for your wheel one then you'd be waiting a very long time so you can understand that this update caused many of the already disgruntled backers to completely lose it in the comments it was now five years since these people had paid money for a record player and now they were being asked to pay more for an upgrade to something they didn't have now, I had two thoughts. Firstly, it did have the air of sending more money to a Nigerian prince in an attempt to recover the money that you'd already sent him. On the other hand, though, if this was a long con, it was a very long and elaborate one for not a massive return. So, since I liked the sound of this new model more than the one I'd backed, I pledged the extra €150 Euros for the upgrade. In for a penny, in for a pound. And that brings us to the end of 2022. At the end of 2023, Minior asked the people who'd upgraded if they'd pay them the extra €150 Euros now rather than wait until dispatched. They promised that this would speed up the delivery. Frankly, by this point, I was surprised they hadn't gone bankrupt. I decided to roll the dice once more, let them have their cash, and I hope it would finally mean I'd get my wheel too. But I was also resigned to the fact that it seemed extremely unlikely I'd ever see my record player or this money again. So then finally we get to the end of 2023 into 24 and the Wheel 2 is available to buy from the Miniot website for £1,734 and it shows that this will ship in four weeks. However, despite being one of the first 200 backers, I'm still waiting for mine from years earlier. I think what was happening is that every Kickstarter order is fulfilled at a significant loss and therefore to keep the whole operation financially viable, they've got to sell a few at the full retail price in order to subsidise those Kickstarters. Just looking at the costs, taking out the import duty, I've paid £630 for my Wheel 2 compared to the £1,768 of the retail version. So I estimate that Miniot are paying out more than £1,000 every time a turntable is sent out to a Kickstarter backer. You'd have to think it would have been an easier option for them just to throw in the towel, as so many other companies would have done. But ultimately, that would have benefited no one. It's been a heck of a wait, but they got there in the end. At least they did, as far as I'm concerned. I suspect there are still quite a number of backers out out there who are still waiting for theirs and I hope they get them soon. Now the instruction buckler is very nice and clear and I think after seeing the pictures of this in its vertical orientation I want to try that out for myself so I'm going to put the stand on and I just have to follow the instructions on this page so let's get on with that. Right, well that seems secure. Now it can be wall mounted as well. One thing I've noticed, we did have these nice dampened feet on it when it was laid flat. And of course we've lost those now with this base. It does have a, a rubberized bit on the bottom and that's just to stop it sliding around. But other than that, this looks more like it's proper orientation because the controls are now along the top here and the light on there will be easily visible from the front. The wires are coming out of the bottom. It just looks like it's designed more to be this way round. Now, it's at this point I've realised the purpose of the magnetic clamp that came with it. Holds the record on the front of there, and it's nice and strong, that, as well. Now, another thing you can do with this is rotate it anti-clockwise, and that automatically starts it playing. You can see the identification system working here and that is quite a bit brighter from this angle as well so yeah I think I'm going to use this in this vertical orientation you just have to be careful not to put it on any surface that's going to transmit vibrations through to that stylus I'm very happy that after a seven year wait, I finally got my wheel turntable, or should I say wheel two. And I'm happy 
that they also gave me the option to upgrade to the wheel too. At the time, a lot of people thought it was a bit of a con. They're asking you for more money and they haven't even sent you anything yet. But it turns out that the wheel two is a much better device than that one that I backed all those years ago. It's a proper second generation device. It's just they couldn't really deliver the first one. And this is the one that I would have wanted if I'd had the option. To me now, with all the features that are on this, it feels very much like a modern day version of something like this these Technics turntables with a quartz lock, linear tracking, direct track access, automatic record size identification and speed adjustment, all that kind of stuff. I mean, I thought they'd never come out with anything like that again. I've made videos about these in the past because I've got a great fondness for this kind of device, but it seemed like in recent years, the chance of anyone coming out with anything like this again was becoming increasingly remote. My only hope for a product that promised to do something similar was the wheel and the chance of that turning up started to seem rather sketchy at times. Now in many ways this is a uh, better record player than the one I've got attached up to my main hi-fi. It's neater, it's got more sophisticated features, it costs way more, it's newer and therefore it's less likely to have components that are going to die anytime soon. But despite all that, I don't think I'm going to be replacing that record player with this one and there are a few reasons behind that. The first one is that the Wheel 2 uses a cartridge that is non-user swappable. It's a modified Audio-Technica AT95E, which is a perfectly fine cartridge. It's known to do a good job, but it is also a budget cart. And when you order a Wheel 2 now, you do have an option to get a slightly more expensive model that includes the slightly better ATVM95E. But you're still looking at a record player that costs around £2,000 pounds including delivery to the UK which is fitted with a 40 odd quid non-user replaceable cartridge and on top of this you're restricted to just using the built-in phono preamp and I think the kind of person that's likely to want to spend 2,000 pounds or so on a record player is also quite likely to be the kind of person who would like to upgrade it at some time use a different external phono preamp swap out the cartridge. Well, you're not going to be able to do either of those things with a Wheel 2. Right, so just to clarify this, if you were to buy a Wheel 2 turntable today, you'd have a choice of two finishes and then the choice of two cartridges. Both the cartridge and the stylus on it are modified to work with the Wheel 2. The cartridge cannot be changed. It is not user replaceable. The stylus, on the other hand, can be swapped out by the user. Since the stylus is modified from the regular version, though, the replacement styli can only be sourced from the Miniot website. Just to show you the difference from the normal one, this is a regular Audio-Technica ATVMN95E stylus, and here it is installed on the regular compatible off-the-shelf Audio-Technica cartridge. And now here's what the modified ATVM95E stylus and cartridge fitted to the wheel look like. Both the cartridge and the stylus have been cut down in order to work with the wheel's mechanism. So when choosing a wheel too, you'd need to make an important decision. Do you want the cheaper model fitted with a non-replaceable AT95E that can only accommodate the stylus that's indicated on the left exclusively available from Miniot, or do you pay a bit more to get the model fitted with the non-replaceable ATVM95E that can accommodate both the ATVM-N95E stylus and the ATVM-N95SH stylus that are both, again, available exclusively from Miniot? If it was my Money, I'd pay for the more flexible option. But any limitations aside, it's still really quite remarkable that a small team of people from the Netherlands were able to produce something as well realised as this. A product that really you'd be hoping Sony or Technic should be bringing out, but they've lost interest in this side of the market. So it's down to people like Miniot to do it instead. And clearly, it has been a massive struggle bringing this out, but it is an excellently made product and they should really be commended on the work that they've done. 
A number of years ago, a chap got in touch to tell me about a system that he developed to play off-centre and warped records without the usual wow and flutter. He'd tried shopping this idea to the various record player manufacturers without success. They all preferred just to stick to making their simple, low-tech devices. Well, it seems like the Miniot people must have had the same idea, because the Wheel 2 monitors and adjusts the motor speed and tracking force every millisecond to ensure that every disc plays optimally. So, let's test out this new tech with my old wow and flutter meter. Okay, so at 33 and a third, the speed looks pretty much near perfect. We're running both of these scales at 1%, so let's narrow this one down to 0.3% either end. And you can see if this scale is to be believed, we're running ever so slightly slow. It's imperceptible. It's 0.08% slow or something. It's, it's next to nothing. So moving across to the flutter, well, if we're looking at a 1% scale, we're running around about 0.2. If we narrow that down to a 0.3 scale, yeah, it's running around about 0.2% flutter. Yeah, it seems to be settling down around about that point and dropping a little bit below it. So, yeah, good results. Looking at the 45 RPM speed, it seems to be running a little bit slow, but ever so slightly. We're looking at around about 0.27% slow there. And as far as the flutter goes, we're getting slightly better results as you'd expect at 45 compared to 33. So we're getting around about 0.1% flutter. Excellent results all round, I think. And it turns out that laying the turntable down flat elicits pretty much identical results. So it doesn't matter whether you have this in a vertical or horizontal orientation, you're gonna get the same performance. Now the stylus pressure, the tracking force, is set at 2.1 grams, but you can adjust that if you bring the stylus out into its service position. So you can see we've got four bars and a little bit more. That's our 2.1 grams. Each of these are worth 0.5. So we can reduce it all the way down to 0.5 grams tracking force or all the way up to four, as easy as that. Now, as a protection for the motor, there's an auto shut off if something gets pushed up against the record and stops it from spinning, which is fine, except when you want to clean your records and that does the same thing. So there is a high torque mode that can be enabled to enable you to clean your records. If we just hold down this button here and then once it gets going, you'll see the light flashes across the top to indicate that we're in the cleaning mode. And now we can hold the brush against the record whilst it still carries on spinning. I don't know how well this comes across on the camera, but in person, this light bar does a really good job of indicating what's going on. You can see the stylus move out towards the outer edge of the record there. It's shown by a brighter light. The sections of the record with recordings on them are shown by these blocks here. The gaps between them are the darker the sections. The so we've just got into track one there. You we can adjust the volume yeah. like so. The player power on. If we want to lift the stylus off, we just press the center of this. We can move it to a different part of the disc like so and drop it into there. It'll flash whilst it's getting into position and now it should start playing. Now, in addition to that, I'll just stop the record playing because once it's stopped, you can activate a repeat function. To do that, you hold down the center section for a couple of seconds. You can see it's been activated because the stylus indicator now shows as three flashing lights. And this means that once it's played through this side of the disc, it'll return back to the beginning and just carry on playing it. Now I've realized I've got to this point in the video and I haven't mentioned the sound quality. That's really because I haven't spent long enough with it. I haven't noticed any deficiencies, otherwise I would have brought them up already. But really this is just a record player that's running at the right speed and it's using an 8095E cartridge. It's not gonna blow anyone's socks off but it's not going to disappoint anyone either. But yeah, there'll be better record players in the world than this one at lower prices as well. But if you want something with all the features on this one, well, here it is. Of course, it's expensive and it really is not suitable for everyone, but based on what it is rather than what it isn't, it is a new fully automatic direct drive, record size sensing, auto speed selecting and correcting, direct track access, linear tracking record player combined into a beautiful design and there's nothing else quite like it available on the market today. And I've got to say, yes, it is currently my favorite 
newly manufactured record player and i can't imagine there'll be anything else come out like this for the foreseeable so that's it for the moment as always thanks for watching